When people think about Middleton Hall and gardens, they think exactly that, the hall and the gardens themselves. One area that often gets overlooked is the variety of water features that we have at Middleton Hall. Now I'm not talking about water sculptures or man-made waterfalls, although we do have a lovely small fountain in our walled garden. I'm talking about several bodies of water that provide some hidden stories of Middleton's long history. This month we dive into the waters of Middleton, taking a look at Middleton's pool throughout the ages and its multitude of uses as a source of entertainment, revenue and habitat. We also have a look at the mysteries of the moat and why it could have been constructed in such an odd shape. It's often said that water has a memory and we are lucky that the waters of Middleton have so many stories to tell. Let's start with Middleton's pool and how it shaped different experiences up to the present day. The current Middleton Pool is an artificial lake which was created in the 16th century. It is reputed to be the earliest man-made lake in Warwickshire. It's an 18-acre reservoir surrounded by mature vegetation consisting of fen, swamp, neutral grassland, meadowland, old orchard, woodland and heathland. This diversity within such a small area accounts for the rich flora and the remarkable variety of fauna, such as breeding birds and moths in particular. There are 46 types of birds that have been recorded to visit Middleton Pool over the years. It is for this reason in 1973 that the area around Middleton Pool was designated a site of special scientific interest. Whilst we would love to dig a little deeper into the history of the pool, archaeological investigations have been prohibited from taking place in Middleton Pool due to its environmental importance. Therefore, we are uncertain what existed on that area of land before Middleton Pool was formed. But we do have one idea. There has been a suggestion that Middleton Pool may have been the site of the elusive ancient water mill at Middleton that was recorded in the Doomsday Book as far back as the 11th century. This is the most likely idea we have about the site. It's possible that the residents of Middleton Hall took inspiration from this ancient creation. In about 1590, Sir Francis Willoughby decided to erect a water wheel powered blast furnace at Middleton Hall to produce iron, a bit of a step up from the ancient water wheel. However, it seems Sir Francis hadn't planned the project carefully. The hydraulic water pressure generated by the river was too weak to power the furnace. Seeing few options to proceed, he therefore dammed two nearby brooks, thus forming the 18-acre lake that is Middleton Pool. That suggests the pool is over 400 years old. Without the strength of water, the blast furnace proved to be financially unviable and iron production ceased in around 1598. You might think that this would have caused a huge financial loss for Francis, but he was a resourceful man and Middleton Pool did actually provide the basis for some revenue. Ironworking was not the only commercial industry that Middleton Pool supported. It also provided the raw materials for button making and table decorations. Swan mussels can be found in Middleton Pool. The shells of these mussels were historically used to make buttons. Although we can't excavate the lake itself, Many buttons and punched shells have been recovered during archaeological excavations that have taken place at Middleton Hall. This indicates that there might have been a localised button making industry and Middleton Pool would have been the source for this business. Fast forward a few hundred years and Middleton's Pool was still generating income for the resident families. In the early 20th century, one of Middleton's Hall's substantial industries was generated by the carpet of white water lilies that flourished on Middleton's Pool. The lilies were described as having large and scented blooms. They were harvested and dispatched to various cities where they were brought by hotels to be used as table decorations. This lily picking industry remained at Middleton until after the Second World War. However, since then, the lilies remained a beautiful sight to see. You can find out more about our lily picking in our blog on Middleton's Lily Pickers. So Middleton's pool was created as a result of a failed project. 
but from its early creation, it hasn't just been a body of water. It's provided Middleton Hall with a number of industries that could keep families afloat during harder times. But the pool wasn't just a source of income. It was also an area of entertainment for Middleton families. Historically, Middleton's pool has been a source of amusement and pleasure because it would regularly freeze in the winter. In the 1900s, Ernestine Isabel March wrote that there was often skating parties on the pool when it froze over. In fact, a pair of Victorian ice skates were found during the restoration of Middleton Hall. A few decades later, the entertainment for Richard Averill was driving on the frozen pool, which he added was good practice for when the family emigrated to Canada. Who would have thought a large pool could host so many experiences throughout history? Was there another water source at Middleton that could provide the same intrigue? Very little of the original moat of Middleton Hall remains today. However, its original design has been rediscovered through archaeological evidence and historical documents. Middleton's moat wasn't designed like other moats. We know that the original moat at Middleton Hall was constructed in the shape of a figure of eight. This style is technically known as a double island moat and is a relatively uncommon moat design in England. Two separate islands of land are created within the moat boundary and one island normally contained the house while the second contained gardens and service buildings. The moat of Middleton Hall in its original figure of eight shape was a feature of the earliest hall on the site. It is thought to date from the mid 13th century and the entirety of the moat would have been dug by hand using antler picks. How long do you think that would have taken? Middleton Hall and the West Lawn were encircled as one island of the moat. The only known crossing over the original moat was via a drawbridge which was the first of many bridges that were constructed at Middleton Hall over the centuries. We don't have any conclusive evidence as to why this style of moat was constructed at Middleton Hall. However, there have been a number of suggestions and so we have come up with the following theories. The first suggestion was that it was constructed for a defensive purpose. It was possibly defensive, but given the date of its construction, it is unlikely. The second suggestion was as a means of keeping the deer out of the living areas. As part of a deer park, this suggestion has merit, but it does not explain the reason for this unusual design. The third suggestion was that it was a means of flood defence. However, that also does not explain why this unusual design was used. Nonetheless, experience has shown that it does work very effectively as a means of flood defence. The fourth suggestion was that the unusual design of moat was a kind of status symbol. It has been said that the more crossings over a moat, the more important were the owners. Therefore, this suggestion does, does have some merit. The fifth and final suggestion was that it was constructed in this style because it was a style that the builder knew. This double island style was particularly favoured by the Knights Templar of Worcestershire. The Knights Templar were at Middleton from 1185 until the 14th century, which does correspond with the time the moat was built. Moreover, the remains of two similarly constructed moats can be found in very close proximity to Middleton Hall, what was once Shirrell Hall and the ancient manor at Northwood. These two similar but so rare features nearby would explain this theory. So we have some good guesses as to how and why the moat was formed in the way it was. It remained as a moat for a while, but when someone came along and drained it, I'm sure they were shocked to discover the remains of a dead body there. If you're interested in finding out more about that, check out our blog on the topic. When you visit Middleton Hall in the present day, and you cast your eyes over Middleton Pool and the remains of the moat, you might be able to see some of the life that they host but you wouldn't be able to tell how much history the waters of Middleton hold from a glance. Not only is the pool a beautiful reservoir, but it is the home of a huge variety of species and was the basis of industry for centuries. 
when you walk along the remains of the moat, you are standing next to one of the rarest forms of moat that England ever saw. Who could have known that the waters of Middleton would hold so much intrigue and mystery? Now you have encountered its colourful past, I'm sure you'll appreciate it all the more the next time you visit. What have you found to be the most interesting story about Middleton's waters? Thank you for watching.